And we're back with a quick channel update. Well, hopefully a quick channel update. Every time I say quick anything, it usually turns into... Anytime I say I'll do a quick video on something, it usually turns into 20 or 30 minutes of me rambling. But I'll, I'll try and be more concise. Anyway, I hope everyone's doing well out there. This year has been... This has been an odd year. A very, very odd year. I don't want to dwell on it, but for me, I've been, I've been quite lucky. My job has been unaffected. Uh, my friends have been mostly unaffected. So I've still got a roof over my head and whiskey in my glass, so I have literally no complaints. Uh, I don't think everyone was so lucky, so I uh, hope you're doing well out there. I hope you're staying safe. Restrictions in Ireland have been relaxed quite substantially in the last while, actually. So it, it hasn't been too bad for us over here in the last while. Now, you'll, you'll, this is the, the amount of alcohol and chocolate it cost me to get through the entire lockdown. So all it cost me was five bottles of whiskey and about 90 bars of chocolate, which I consider was a bargain price. Now, the uh, the Octmore bottle there on the far left, I have to apologize for that one. Uh, do you know when you see something you shouldn't buy, but you've always wanted it, and then you're like, well, you know, there's a pandemic, the world's crazy, I, sh I, should, just, I should just do it now, I may never get another chance. Well, yeah, I kind of convinced myself that I should spend Patreon money on that bottle. Yeah, it's one of those things that I never would have bought myself, but... Oh my God, it was delicious. I took one taste and I'm like, damn, I can't wait to share this with my friends. Followed shortly thereafter by the crushing realization that that was not a possibility due to the lockdown. But, but uh, I didn't, I didn't pig out on it. And I saved it and I met up with my friends later in a park and we all brought our own glasses. And yeah, we totally legally drank it in um, a nearby enclosed space. Yes. So it was fine. Yes, perfectly fine. Um... I also noticed that my whiskey consumption dropped dramatically the moment the uh, travel restrictions were increased up to five kilometers and I could meet the girlfriend again. It turns out being without her actually increases my drinking. Who would have figured? Also, it increased hers as well. Oh, man. Zoom calls with alcohol are the worst or the best. I don't know which. One last thing to note about that Octomore stuff. It, it's 59.5% alcohol. Uh, in American, that's like 120 what, 119 proof? Yeah, it's 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 terribly dangerous. No more than two or three glasses of the stuff for anyone in any one sitting ever. And at three, you're looking at a very interesting bicycle ride home. Yes, all, all, all three of us met with bicycles in the center of a park because it was the only thing inside our five kilometer radius. And cycling back home after that stuff. Yeah, let's just say I, I wouldn't recommend it. But never fear, I've still got plenty of, uh, plenty of supplies left over just in case anything goes wrong. Yeah, that's... Uh, Maybe I stockpile just a little bit too much. You know, you never know. I, I was worried that like whiskeys kept running out in the shop and I'm like, you know what? I better stockpile a few just in case that there's no more coming for a while. But everything seems to be easing off now. So I think we're safe. Probably. During the last 60 days, I think it is since my last update, we have finally managed to finish off the RimWorld playthrough. That was seven months. I enjoyed every minute of it though. Not, not my most popular playthrough. I know it wasn't a, a big hit with everyone, but... Learning that game and, and plowing through it and just figuring out all the mechanics was so much fun. And finally getting those uh, those pawns off the planet. I, I, I At times there, I thought half of them were just going to end up dead. But uh, the next, uh, I've been doing a few tutorials in the meantime. I just wanted to hammer out how the mechanics work before I started in again. It's just some of the mechanics on it, like the surgery ones and uh, the shooting ones. I wasn't sure where I should be going with those. So I wanted to do some testing. That's why there was, uh, there's been a few tutorial episodes. They were more just me figuring out the mechanics I wanted to understand properly before I dove back in again to another series. Um, oh, and uh, I know I'm a little bit late out on episodes this week. It's, well, the, the, there's some painting going on in the house and I also got sort of tied up in that Shipbreaker game. I put in about 25 hours into that thing. I, I don't know why. It's a weird game. I know it wasn't a good game. Well, no, it was fun to play. You know what? I got a review of that coming out. It, it, it's fine, but um, yeah, sorry sorry about the, the two episodes, the Monday, Tuesday episodes, I just couldn't get them out. The painting combined with the, the slight distractions kind of got in the way. Uh, the newest, I'll be doing another, I'll be starting another RimWorld series this Friday, I think. I want to do a RimWorld series where I want to pick a map seed and then use that same map seed over multiple playthroughs and just sort of change a few variables here and there. Like limit myself on the same, have the six starting characters that you can choose from and you're no way you can re-roll them. And then what combination would be the best to start with? What would be the best location on the planet? And maybe try two or three games in the series. Fast, quick paced games where you rush through to get through to the, off the planet. And try to do it as quickly and efficiently as you can. Then repeat this, repeat it again, but this time maybe try a different map location or try different characters or you know just a different starts to see how they affect it and how it plays out. I haven't seen anyone really do an optimal start and I'm just kind of curious what happens if you change your starting positions, like say from going from a tempered zone to 
I don't know, a, a swamp or a, a tropical forest or something like that, and what kind of impact that would have on the game. But uh, that, that'll be Friday. We'll see how it goes. The oxygen not included playthrough is going quite well as well. The baby base one. Um, yeah, I, I'm really enjoying the restrictions placed on me by that map. Uh, next episode's due out Thursday. Thursday should be yep, day after this comes out. Uh, I got definitely slowed down designing it. I had to do a... I had to design uh, an oxygen, a liquid oxygen and liquid hydrogen facility, but I had to make it nice and compact and I wanted to squeeze it into the left-hand side of the map, but I also had to design a sour gas boiler and I wanted to squeeze it into the right-hand side of the map. Yeah, both interesting designs and it took a lot of playing around to try and get ones that would work and would fit into the cramped spaces, so I spent a lot of time in debug playing. It's also one of the reasons it slowed me down getting an episode out. I just couldn't... Well, not couldn't getting them working and tested so that once I build them, they'll work in the game and hopefully won't collapse out. Yeah, I'd rather not build a sour gas boiler only to have it break down, you know, a hundred cycles later afterwards. But uh, we'll find out if I've engineered them correctly in the next episode. Or, well, we'll, we'll find out soon enough one way or the other. It's weird the things you end up doing trying to keep yourself sane or the things you just end up finding, you know, you'd like to try. Like having so many chocolate bars that you thought, hey, why don't I make a house of cards out of them? Yeah, it turns out they're not quite the same building blocks as cards. You can't overlap them, really, so it, it's a different way of building a house of cards. But you put in enough time and effort, and maybe a, a little few tasters here and there, you can definitely get yourself a decent hat of, house of cards made out of chocolate. But uh, no, but what I'm trying to get out of here is I have a, I have a, house, a, a collection of Steam games that I have to play at some point. I, I have uh, given myself some rules to sell myself buying a stupid amount of games. I won't buy, I'll put games on my wish list, but I won't buy them until they go down to five euros or less. If I buy a game that is more than five euros, the rule is I have to play it immediately, which is how I ended up playing Oxygen Not Included and RimWorld and Factorio and <laughs> Shipbreaker and a bunch. Yep, basically, I'll only play a game immediately or pay more than five euros for a game if I'm going to play it right then and there. Otherwise, I just put it on my wish list and wait till it hits five euro mark. So I think I'll put up a list of those uh, those games. I am not above crowdsourcing information from people, so if you've got any suggestions of any of those games that are pretty good, let me know. I think I've got a few more floating around, but I think for a Steam library, that's, that's well, even all those games are not unplayed. I've definitely played quite a few of the ones on that list already. I think I'm doing pretty well. I hear people who have hundreds of those uh, unfinished games. At the same time, I've been learning wonderful things about YouTube. For example, in one video I put up, it was an ambush video where the people got ambushed a bunch in RimWorld, and I used the word ambush seven times. It turns out that triggered something in YouTube, and it sort of, uh, it reduced, monetized my video because it had the word ambush in it seven times. And the only way I was able to figure that out by I kept editing the video and playing around with the keywords until I figured out, yeah, just, just don't mention ambush seven times. Yeah, it's, it's crazy the things you learn when you're messing around on YouTube. In the last update video, I mentioned that uh, there's a, an expression, may you live in interesting times. And then people pointed out that may you live in interesting times is actually a Chinese proverb and it's used as a curse. And then I did some Googling on it and it turns out, yeah, what's really going on here is it was actually made up by Westerners, as far as we can tell. And they made it up and said it's a Chinese curse. And then the Chinese were like, what, what, what are you looking at us for? That, that has nothing to do with us. We never said that. Nothing at all. We, we, we don't know what you're talking about, bro. So yeah, it turns out May You Live in Interesting Times is actually an English proverb that we tried to pass off as a, a Chinese one. Who knew? I'm still trying to put an hour into responding to comments, but honestly, I can't get around to all of them. I try. It's just there's, there's not enough time in the day. Also, I am super easily distracted. This one comment here. Oh, my God. Uh, they mention the movie Phenomenon and something to do with dining chairs. I'm like, I, I don't remember how these two relate. So... Yeah, long story short, I spent about 40 movie minutes skimming a 1996 movie starring John Travolta because I'd seen it before and I didn't remember anything to do with the dining chairs. Yeah, that was not a very productive day for comments. <laughs> that said, I do actually read all the comments. I read a lot of them and it, it's kind of put me in a weird position because I'm never sure if my ideas are my own anymore. For example, this comment here was about using naphtha as a, a coolant for my, uh, for my metal refinement. This comment, which I ended up doing exactly that, using naphtha as a, a coolant in my metal refinery, I thought that idea was mine. However, this comment came out on the very first episode of Baby Base, probably before I even considered it. But, so does that mean the idea was mine? Did I have it independently of that comment? Or did that comment trigger it and it's sitting in the back of my brain? I'm pretty sure the only reason I, I actually survived the RimWorld series and, and some of these other playthroughs is just... People keep telling me stuff in the comments and that stuff always goes in your brain somewhere and you've always got it to pull out when an emergency strikes. Uh, I, I don't know. I feel like I'm sort of 
crowdsourcing how to play the game and I'm just consuming all of the comments I can that give me any advantages. You know, you, you pick the ones that work and you keep those and you sort of end up discarding the ones that don't work. Uh, it's a very weird feeling, but what I kind of enjoy. I do like learning the mechanics of games and all of the helpful suggestions that go with it. The main point of this video, though, is to apologize for Mondays and Tuesdays episodes not going up. Uh, just uh, turns out burning 25 hours on a, a new shiny game is is detrimental to your time investment. Also, I've been socializing a bit more because the restrictions have been dropped an awful lot more and we can actually meet up with people again, which has been great. Uh, at the same time, yeah, no, that, that's no excuse. I, I should have been getting the videos out. It's just, I think it takes, I worked it out, it's about 16 to 25 hours a week to get the, the videos up. 16 hours, depending on how early on in the series you are. The longer you go into a series or the deeper you get into one, the more time it takes to do each episode because you have to actually spend more time on them. Though it does feel kind of good. I don't know. Maybe I'm weird in that I enjoy putting all the hours into it. Uh, it does eat into your free time, but you know what? Totally worth it. Who needs a social life anyway, especially when you've got whiskey? That picture up the top there is, that is the liquid oxygen and hydrogen setup I've been designing in a debug map. I think that looks nice and compact, and it only runs in a single st turbine, and it's only designed for about half a kilo piece. You know what? We'll, we'll be going into that in game. I just sort of tr sort of threw that in there because, you know, <laughs> I really need to make up for not getting any any out this any uh, any oxygen not included out this Monday. Anyway, I, I hope you uh, didn't get too bored by this update. I know when I see updates from other YouTubers, I'm like, I, I don't want to spend 20 minutes listening to their life's problems, but hey, <laughs> it's 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 the sign of the times. Anyway, I hope this didn't bore you too badly and uh, good luck.